For as long as she could remember, music was always a huge part of her life. From adoring fans to bright lights, cameras to red carpets, it never seemed enough. There was always something that wasn't quite right. Allah. Allah was what was missing. This is my next record. I've always loved the streets of Perth. The beautiful architecture, the cafes and the quirky shops, especially here in London Court, paired with great weather, makes it a perfect start to what would hopefully be another insightful day with Sheikh Yahya, inshallah. Upon my return from Hajj, um, I didn't want to tell anyone about what was going on with my life, with my heart, with my mind. You know, the only person that really knew what was going on was my husband, No, and of course, my parents. Um, and, you know, the struggle even started at the airport before I even touched down in KL. And I was receiving all kinds of messages and emails about my um, takeover concert, um, which I was meant to, to launch, you know. That was my first test that Allah gave me. And so I was like, should I launch it or not? You know, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? Um, and then I just thought to myself, like, I just did the Hajj and, you know, I, I made my du'as and I did all these things. And for me to just do that, I, I feel it, it, it would make my experience such, you know, a waste. A complete waste of time, of money, of effort. So I decided to send back the email and say, you know what? Um, I'm really sorry and um, um, my apologies for any con inconvenience made but I have decided to cancel da 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 and that was it and I thought to myself okay I think inshallah this is the right decision. I'd like to ask you something about being comfortable in our comfort zones meaning sometimes you know we do our obligatory uh, ibadah praying five times a day we do zakat and sometimes you know we do feel that you know, I'm okay, I've, I'm doing my thing, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm covering everything, but I don't need to do anything else. I don't have to do anything extra. Do we need to strive for more? Uh, you know, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, وَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Always be earnest to achieve greater good. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you do hear these hadith of the Prophet you so know, sorry. a man comes and asks him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is it true if I believe in you and I pray the five, fast the month, give my zakah if I have money for it, and go to hajj if I'm able. Uh, I'll go to Jannah. The Prophet said, yes. Mashallah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, you know, our deen is very, very simple, although it's deep. And I think that's really the best answer. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes, but no. Yes, it's a weird, but no. Mm. <laughs> it's a weird place. <laughs> you always want to improve. In everything in life, we always want to improve. You, we never have enough money. We never have enough prestige. We never have a big enough home. We mm -hmm. never have a happy enough life. We always want more. Okay. And as human beings, we're really made up of three things. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I, we're a physicality. We're also uh, uh, intellectual. We have a consciousness and we have a rationale and, and, and thought. Mm -hmm. And third, we're a spirit. Uh, you know, we are, we're a soul. Mm -hmm. We normally neglect the soul at the expense of our intellect and, and physical needs. Okay. So we kind of procrastinate with the things that relate to the soul, although we're very earnest with the physical things and the intellectual things. Okay. And really that's the opposite. So it really needs to be inverted. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't get complacent. Okay. Uh, but uh, the Prophet ﷺ does tell us that our faith is something that is really uh, you know, you can attain a great deal of happiness between you and Allah with the simple things. Okay. So it's not about doing major, major things, uh, maximum uh, effort mm -hmm. to gain a, a standing with Allah. Really, it's simple things. Ayatul Kursi, when you wake up, before yeah. you sleep, mm -hmm. after every salah, guarantees you a place in Jannah. It's a really Allah. simple thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al azim it's the heaviest thing on your scale on the Day of Judgment from the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the simple things are really good, but we, you know, it has to be done in a way with an open spirit. We shouldn't just say, oh, I'm happy with where I am. There's always a desire to improve.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد. One of the things that we uh, underestimate so much in our life is the simple acts of worship, the really small things that we don't think mean something so great that they will give us such a, a massive reward. And Allah says, اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا Remember Allah plentifully. It's the only thing that Allah says, do it a lot. Uh, simple things like, subhanAllah, is what saved Yunus from the belly of, of the whale. Allah says that uh, when Yunus was in the belly of the whale and the whale dived down, uh, fi batnihi ila He would have stayed in there until the day of judgment. Lawla an kana min al His only saving grace was that he was a person who made tasbih a lot. And the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says that the angels who are down there, they heard him. And they were like, we know this voice, but it shouldn't be in this area. It shouldn't be in the ocean, you know, so far down. And that's how they race to save uh, by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yunus. It's a simple thing saying, Subhanallah al uh, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al uh, clears our sins even if they covered the surface of an ocean. Uh, they are two words that are light on the tongue, that are loved by Allah, that fill the scales on the Day of Judgment. And whenever someone is coming back, you don't want them to start with something massive. Most people, you know, they do something wrong and they say, oh my God, I gotta go to Hajj. And it's really as simple as saying, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, and thinking about it and doing uh, two rakah prayer. There's this beautiful hadith and uh, a man stops the Prophet ﷺ on the way to the masjid to lead prayer and he says, oh Messenger of Allah, you know, I kissed a woman, she's not my wife. And that's like, everyone's like stunned, whoa, the Sahaba, this guy, this happening in Medina? And the Prophet said, shh, let us go finish our prayer. So the Prophet leads the prayer and Li, and after he finishes the prayer, so I tell him he wants to leave quickly. He doesn't want to talk to this man anymore. And the man sees the Prophet leaving quickly, so he runs after him and says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, you know I told you. The Prophet ﷺ said, didn't you just pray? He said, yes. He said, Qad Allahu lak. Then know that Allah has forgiven you. And then the Prophet says this beautiful hadith. He says, no, no believer makes a good wudu, like a proper wudu, and prays two rak'ah to Allah, and asks for forgiveness, except they're forgiven.